guys, how's it going? My name's The Breath, and welcome to another challenge video. Today, I'm asking the question, can you beat Pokemon Emerald with only a Cypher? You don't really see Cypher used in Pokemon challenge videos, and to me, that's because it's actually a bit too much of a tank. With stats like 110 in attack, 105 in speed, and 80 defense and special defense, it would be no understatement to say that this thing is both underrated and overpowered at the same time. Underrated because with base 500 in stats and such high attack and speed, you'd think this guy would be used more often. Overpowered, I think that speaks for itself though. There is a theme to this video, and as with the other times, first person to correctly guess it in the comments bags themselves a shout out in the next one. Looking up the level up move pool, I'm instantly drawn to two of them, Swords Dance and Double Team. When I reach level 41, I think it's fair to say this game will become, for the most part, ridiculous. But I need to do one thing, and that's to show off Scyther in a bug type edition of Hoenn with every type. Let's briefly discuss the rules and then let's crack on with it, shall we? The rules are so simple that at this point I sound like a broken record. I'm only allowed to use Scyther in battle with the exception to that being the 7th gym. No items are allowed to be used in battle and finally, TM usage is allowed as ever. With that done, let's begin. The game begins and we choose the male character, naming ourselves something crucially inventive like Breath. The early part of the game kicks off and we head up to see what on earth the professor is doing. We catch him attempting to get a poor Zigzagoon to fillet him, so we open up his bag and choose our torture instrument. A cypher. Doing the right thing and putting the little raccoon dog out of its misery, we get to nickname our cypher, calling him Freddy. We head up to challenge May and beat her as we always do. With the game now open to us, we head towards Rustbra. Cypher's bug flying typing is, well, that depends on how you look at it. For Hoenn, where fire, electric, flying and rock type moves are all way too common, it's a disaster. But having resistances to grass, fighting and bug with a complete immunity to ground, it does have its upsides. Roxanne, however, yeah, that four times weakness to rock is going to hurt. My first attempt at level 16, failing completely to get past even the first Geodude. The issue here isn't so much the damage we can deal, but the damage we can take. I come back at level 20 and although we do make it to the nose pass, the result doesn't change much. At level 27, while under pressure, not only are we strong enough to deal damage, but also tank the hits. We claim the first gym badge and can move on with my pitiful excuse for a life. Having done that, we gain access to Dewford and the second gym, Brawly. We kick off the fight and at level 28 with a super effective stab wing attack, it should be no surprise that we do claim the badge. So in the cave we go to track down the elusive Stevie boy. Dropping off his letter and running right on the boat all the way to Slateport. There we bump into Doc in the dockyard, the captain in the maritime museum and some bloke who calls himself Archie. He drones on and on about the expansion of the world's water parks and how he wants to convert all car parks into one before leaving out the way he came. With that departure we head up towards Morville and the electric type gym. I'm really looking forward to this. But before we can go anywhere, that damn girl May gets in our way again. Given the fact that the so-called rival fights in this game are all pathetic and much more of an annoyance anyway, I gave her a Trico for a starter. Does anyone want to hazard a guess at how easily we defeated her? And while you're at it, how about you hazard a guess at how we fared against that fabled electric gym? We head in after defeating all of the available trainers and reaching level 37. Thanks in no small part to Electrike using Howl three times in a row, allowing us to get off the same number of swords dances and good paralysis luck. We beat him the first time. I didn't see that coming, but now? Well, don't stop me now, I'm feeling invincible. So I ride the crap out of that wave, all the way up to Mount Chimney where we encounter Maxi for the first time. This strategy is going to pretty much repeat itself for the whole game, it's that effective. Make sure you pay attention. Swords dances, two in this case, attacking moves, wing attack in this case. But not for long, because the fight's over and that gains us access to the meteorite, and in turn, a new TM, Return. I think it goes without saying that Return is one of the most powerful moves in the entire game, and on a Pokemon like Scyther, I'm really looking forward to abusing this one. Where though? 
let's start with Flannery. When we rock up there, we do have Return in our moveset, but I save that for her Torkoal. With the Swords Dance technique at our disposal, we knock her aside to claim the fourth badge and carve a path straight through to our father. Not before we head up into the desert and stand before some fossils. I'm not going to spoil it now, you guys leave a comment down below which fossil you think I took and why. I'll even issue a cheeky shout out this time for the first person who guesses it right in the comments. Now I've not been grinding at all for the last section of the game and in truth not since Watson. This does mark the point though where that's probably going to need to end because Norman proved to be way more hassle than he was worth. I saw from fight 1 that this was possible at our level but it was so difficult and I'm so stubborn that I decided that I was going to be doing it now. It took me multiple attempts but I did complete it. I beat off confusion damage taking me to 6 HP on the first one and that means I've beaten off my father and run away towards the next gym challenge, Fortry. We're known to have me scared, I won't lie lads, but the show must go on and that means facing her. It took me a couple of tries, again I'm not going to lie. I have nothing that can really do anything in terms of damage to Skarmory, and in truth, nor do I want that. I like a challenge in parts, and the only thing at my disposal that I have is a high attack stat, and ultimately, that's all we needed to conquer this one. So there's a lot of story stuff that takes place now, Mount Pyre, the magma hideout where we see Maxi release Groudon, Slateport to witness a stolen submarine, and the aqua hideout because padding out gameplay is important or something I guess. But what we really care about is the big one, the seventh badge, Moss Deep. This is a gym that is usually a scary one. I anticipated grinding, but I thought fuck it one or give it a go eh? The plan at level 52 was simple, 6 double teams, set up some sword stances and hopefully have enough power and evasion set up that we can force our way through. And not for the first time this challenge, we've claimed a badge, the 7th badge, on our first try no less. With that done we head deep underwater into the seafloor cavern to where Archie awaits to awaken Kyogre, which he does. Back on the surface, all hell is breaking loose. I'm talking doom levels of breaking loose. It's that bad. Steven tells us that absolutely under no circumstances whatsoever are we to do something stupid like meet him in Sutopolis. So meeting Steven in Sutopolis, we head deep into the cave of origin where we meet some geezer named Wallace who somehow expects us to know where to find a legendary dragon that we've never heard of in a place we haven't heard of before seems legit to me. And up to the top of that tower we go, where we bump into and awaken the sleeping beauty. That fellow is glowing nicely for someone who's just woken up and instantly does his best impression of my father and fucks off. That's just a joke people, come on, don't get triggered. With the abrupt fight settled nicely, into the 8th and final gym we go. Once water types didn't scare me until I started trying. For what reason? I can't actually remember. But hey, in my defence, I've recently upgraded my editing software and I'm still trying to get the hang of it, which ultimately led to last night's cock up, which means this video is a day late and I can only apologise for that. But at the moment, I don't have time to think. All I do know is that with a couple of double teams, sword dances, and good attraction luck, we managed to comfortably sweep aside the final gym. But it does pose an issue. I don't think I'm anywhere near tough enough to tackle the Elite Four right now, so what level will I need to be? Having decided on the terrible idea to do some grinding up at the end of the next section, I head into Victory Road and the clash with that Wally named Wally. See, even the game knows what he is. Turns out that actually what he is, is a decent trainer. If it wasn't for the sheer power that Cypher can muster, then he might have actually worried me. But alas, he didn't, and the Elite Four are all that stand before us and that ever elusive champion. After a couple of levels of grinding at level 59, we head through the door. Sydney's up first and he has a few members of his team that don't stand a single chance. The issue with us here is that Mighty Enna has Intimidate for an ability and Sand Attack as a move it likes to spam. Meaning that setting up comes with the drawback of possibly having your accuracy work against you. 
Lucky for me though, I don't need to worry, I can take the next step onwards, towards Phoebe. The ghost type user is a bitch, and I don't mean that in a sexist way or whatever, so don't come gunning for my neck, I mean she's a bitch to defeat. There were so many times I thought I'd have to go and grind and do all of this again, but it does turn out that with a little bit of fortune, okay, a lot of bit of fortune, we can defeat her. 29 HP though, phew. With her defeated, we have Glacier thrust before us. Her ice type monsters aren't actually that much of a worry for me. She's no different to basically every other battle that we've had since we got access to Swords Dance and Double Team. Set up, strike and keep on striking until victory. Doesn't take long though and that's exactly how this happened too. So Drake is the last member of the four and his Shellgon comes out first. The fun bit here is that it likes to use Protect to stall out and Rock Tomb which already has non-perfect accuracy. It gives me the perfect leverage to set up a couple of double teams and sword dances with reduced risk to damage. It turned out that this was the power play that I needed. Sweeping aside the dragon guy has, for the most part, never been easier. He was the last hammer to fall and that just leaves the champion. And that champion turns out to be the bloke Wallace from earlier. He's clearly hiding some sort of hidden or special power. I actually think it's a kind of magic because he knew that we'd be able to identify where Red Quasar was hiding, so I'm sure that he saw this fate coming. The champion gets no special treatment compared to anyone else. A setup, a power play. With that done, the credits roll and we are the champions, but this game is not done yet. We have one more fight to go. Steven Stone. I did some grinding first, I knew it was necessary. I did try at level 70 and it did not go well. Damn, I need more. 10 levels more actually, so going again at level 80 and I realise that man, is this thing a struggle of a fight. Armaldo, Craydilly and Claydol make for lovely breather moments in it, but I've got nothing to deal easily with Skarmory, Agron and Metagross. It goes without saying then that power was going to be our best friend, and that is kind of how it happened actually. Return was going to be my go-to move, even with Aerial Ace being a guaranteed hit every time and also being stab, Return just has too much power. At least against Metagross and Skarmory that is. Agron being 4 times resistant to normal means that Aerial Ace does have a time to shine. Fortunately for us, we manage it and Cypher has defeated the whole game. Yeah, I know this is a bit of a cheeky thing to call a challenge, but ultimately, if you ask me, showing off a Pokemon that's a bit lesser used in these videos is just as much a benefit and deserving of the screen time. Every single Pokemon has its own positives and drawbacks when it comes to a single Pokemon challenge, and Cypher in that regard is no different. Learning Sword Stance and Double Team by Level Up just make it so powerful. Any Pokemon with high attack that can learn these moves? Man anyone should be aware of those beasts. At the start of this challenge I asked a simple question, can you beat Pokemon Emeralds with only a Cypher? The answer? Yes, yes you can. But I think we all knew that was coming when we saw the stat distribution at the start, eh? So how about a challenge where the result might actually be in doubt from the get go? Well for that, join me next time where I ask the question, can you beat Pokemon Pearl with only a Shuppet? Thank you so much for watching guys, please feel free to comment with any challenge suggestions you might like to see in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next one.